Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to solve word problems that involve linear quadratic systems of equations. Our first example, if f of x equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 and g of x equals x plus 3, find all possible values of x that satisfy the equation f of x equals 2 times g of x. So for f of x, we're going to replace it with 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 and that's going to be equal to 2 times g of x, which we'll replace with x plus 3. Now we have a quadratic equation, so the first thing we'll do is distribute the 2 on the right side of the equation, so that equals to 2x plus 6. Now we have a quadratic equation. In order to solve, we need it equal to 0, so we'll have 2x squared. We'll subtract 2x from both sides, so minus 7x. And we'll subtract 6 from both sides, so minus 4 equals 0. Now we have a leading coefficient that is prime, so guess and check should work nicely. So our factors would start with 2x and x. So we need to think of factors of negative 4 that when we distribute our factors out, we would get negative 7x. So let's try negative 4 and positive 1. So we'd have negative 8x plus x, which is negative 7x. Perfect. Remember, you can always do grouping here as well. You would wind up with the same two factors. So that means either 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 4 equals 0. So here, x is equal to negative 1 half. Here, x equals 4. Now, typically, when we're solving a system, a linear quadratic system, to be more specific, not only do we have to find the x values, but we have to find the y values for the points of intersection. But in this case, they're only asking us for the values of x. And the reason being is the equation they defined is only in terms of the variable x. So really, it would only have the solution of x. Right? Technically, this equation here is what we're solving, which only has one variable. They just stated it in a different way, in a word problem. Okay, so we have x equals negative 1 half and x equals 4 as our two solutions. So what it comes down to is making sure we read the problem carefully. They specified that we were only solving for x, so that's the only solutions we want. We don't want to find the y values here. Okay, so... If we write this as a solution set, we would have negative 1 half and 4. Our next example, if f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 16 and g of x equals 8x plus 24, find all possible values of x to the nearest tenth that satisfy the equation f of x equals 1 half times g of x. So we'll replace f of x with x squared minus 2x plus 16. That's going to be equal 1 half times g of x, which we'll replace with 8x plus 24. So here's the equation that we're trying to solve. Now notice they say to the nearest tenth. So what that makes me think is we're going to wind up using the quadratic formula. But let's solve this and see. We'll start by distributing the 1 half on the right side. So that's equal to 4x plus 12. We have a quadratic equation. In order to solve, we need equal to 0. So we'll subtract 4x from both sides. So we have x squared minus 6x. Subtract 12 from both sides. Plus 4 equals 0. And looking at that trinomial, it does not appear to be factorable. So we'll set up the quadratic formula. So a equals 1, b equals negative 6 c equals 4, so the discriminant is negative 6 squared minus 4ac, so that's 36 minus 16, which is 20. So 20 is not a perfect square, so it confirms that we cannot factor the quadratic, but it is positive, so that tells us we are going to have solutions to this equation. So we'll use the quadratic formula, so x equals negative b, so the negation of negative 6, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which is 20, 
all over 2a, so 2 times 1. The square root of 20 can be simplified to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 5, which is 2 times the square root of 5. So simplifying, we have x equals positive 6 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5 over 2. We can factor out a 2 in the numerator. We're left with 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2, and the 2's simplify. So we have either x equals 3 plus the square root of 5, or x equals 3 minus the square root of 5. Now because we're rounding to the nearest tenth, we technically didn't need to simplify the radical here. We could have just simplified and plugged straight into our calculator, but I like to get in good habit of always simplifying my answer when using the quadratic formula. It also makes it easier to plug into the calculator. So going to the calculator, we have 3 plus, we'll hit second, x squared, which gives me the square root of 5. So that's 5.236. So x equals 5.236 and some more decimals. So rounded to the nearest tenth, x is approximately 5.2. And then 3 minus the square root of 5 is 0.7639. So x is 0.7639 and more decimals. Let's just confirm 7639. Good. So round to the nearest tenth, x is approximately 0 0.8. Again, going back to the original problem, we're only solving for the values of x because technically we're solving this equation, which only has x in it. So here are the two solutions. If we wrote it in a solution set, we'd have 0 0.8 and 5.2. Next up, the function p of x equals negative x squared plus 6x models the profit made in hundreds of dollars for selling x cases of support strength. The function c of x equals x models the cost in hundreds of dollars for producing x cases of sports strength. If x is in terms of hundreds, answer the following. So essentially we have a business here, and they have a function for their profit, and they have a function for their cost. And we're looking to first graph both of those. We'll start with p of x, which is the quadratic function, negative x squared plus 6x. So we need to find as much information as we can. So we have a y-intercept at 0, 0, 0 squared plus 0. Our axes of symmetry, axes of symmetry, so that's x equals negative b, so negative 6 over 2a is negative 1. So that's negative 6 over negative 2, which would be positive 3. So the vertex is 3 comma, so we'd have 3 squared, which is 9, times negative 1 is negative 9. 6 times 3 is 18, so negative 9 plus 18 is positive 9. Now we also need our x-intercepts, so negative x squared plus 6x equals 0. We can factor out a negative x. That leaves us with x minus 6 equals 0. So if negative x equals 0, that means x equals 0. If x minus 6 equals 0, that means x equals 6. Hey, I'm skipping a step here, but I'm a little tight for root. So we have 0, 0, and 6, 0 as the x-intercepts. Now we have a lot of room to work with here. So if we're applying these points, let's open up our scale a little bit. So instead of scaling each box to be 1, I'll go every two boxes is 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And x is the cases of sports drink. And I'll do the same on the y-axis. Every two boxes is 1.
and the y-axis is the cost and the profit, which is in dollars. So we'll just put a nice, try to put a nice dollar sign to label the y-axis. Okay, so plotting p of x, so we have 0, 0, we have 6, 0, we have 3, 9, We're going to need a few more points on that. So let's plug in 1. So if we plug in 1, 1 squared is 1, times negative 1 is negative 1, and then 6 times 1 is 6, so negative 1 plus 6 is 5, so 1, 5. By symmetry, 5, 5 will also be on our parabolic curve. And let's also plug in 2. So 2 squared is 4, times negative 1 is negative 4, 6 times 2 is 12, so negative 4 plus 12 is 8. And by symmetry, 4, 8 will also be on our parabolic curve. So now we can connect our points. So that's P of X. And then we have C of X, which equals X. So that's a linear function with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0, 0. So we have 0, 0. Slope of 1, based on our scale, is up two boxes to the right two boxes. Up two to the right two, 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 up two to the right two. And I'll use the line tool here. And draw in the linear function for c of x and we'll label that c of x okay so there is the profit and the cost graphed together now the next question how many cases must the company sell for the profit to equal the cost well the two points of intersection are here and here but a good reminder going back through the problem is x cases of sports drink and x is in terms of hundreds. Okay, so if x equals 1 for a point of intersection, that really means 100 cases. Okay, so we see the two points of intersection. We're essentially looking for where p of x is equal to c of x. We're looking to solve that equation. So that happens at two points, either zero cases Right, if they sell nothing, it costs nothing, they would make no profit. Or at x equals 5, but x is in terms of hundreds, so that means or 500 cases. Okay, so if they sell 0 cases or 500 cases, the profit would equal to the cost. So they would make no money. Right? It would they would profit exactly what it cost a profit and cost all right so they really want to sell in this zone where their profit is higher than their cost they don't want to be here right they would be losing money here and we can tell all that visually by looking at the graphs of the two functions our last example two art exhibits opened at the local museum on the same day the attendance for one can be modeled by y equals x squared minus 4x plus 35, while the other can be modeled by y equals 7x plus 5. So we have one quadratic model and one linear model. Determine the number of days since opening that the attendance at each exhibit was the same. What was the attendance on each of those days? So let's first find the number of days. So we'll solve for x here by substituting x squared minus 4x plus 35 in for y. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 35 equals 7x plus 5. So we have a quadratic equation. We need set equal to 0. So x squared will subtract 7x from both sides, so minus 11x. And then we'll subtract 5 from both sides, so plus 30 equals 0. We can factor this. x minus 5 times x minus 6 equals 0. Negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30. And if we add them up, we get negative 11. 
So either x minus 5 equals 0 or x minus 6 equals 0 by the zero product property. So we have x equals 5 or x equals 6. So the number of days since opening with the attendance at each exhibit was the same, 5 days and 6 days. Now they do ask what the attendance was on each of those days. Well, since the attendance is the same at both, we'll pick the easier model to plug into, which is the linear, y equals 7x plus 5. So here to find the attendance, we'll have 7 times 5 plus 5. So y is 35 plus 5, which is 40. And on day 6, we'd have y equals 7 times 6 plus 5. So y equals 42 plus 5, which is 47. So to answer both questions, 40 people attended each on day 5, 47 people attended each on day 6. And there we have our solution. So here, basically we were practicing solving our linear quadratic systems of equations, whether it was algebraically or graphically. We saw one example where we had to use the quadratic formula, and then on top of that, it's important to read carefully. Do they want us to find the point of intersection? So the, do they want us to find both x and y? Or are they just looking for a particular value? Let's say x, for instance. Okay, so that's the key to this video. So now, go practice. Make sure you read each word problem carefully to get your solution. Click the Amazon link down below for my algebra workbook so you can practice on your own. Give the video a like. And before you go, click that subscribe button so you can see more videos just like this. Thanks for watching.